week's Parsha, Parsha Tzav, begins with a couple of mitzvot that at first glance seem out of place, but after further investigation, underscore some of the most essential elements of a life of daily avoda, daily service to Hashem. Although both Parsha Tvayikra and Parsha Tzav both address Karbana, they do so from a different vantage point. Parsha Tvayikra is addressed to the individuals who bring the Karbana, as opposed to Parsha Tzav, which speaks to the Kohanim, how to bring the Karbana. But yet Parsha Tzav begins by telling us, Zot Torah Ta'olah, what we would seemingly translate as, these are the laws of the Karban Ola. These are the laws of the burnt offering. But the Torah does not continue by stating the laws of the burnt offering, but rather referencing two mitzvot connected to the daily avodah, the daily service. The first, the mitzvah of Trumat Hadeshen, of raising up the ashes, removing the previous day's ashes that is gathered on the Mizbeach from the burning of the previous day's karbonah and the subsequent removal of those ashes from the Mikdash premises. Secondly, it speaks about a requirement to maintain a constant fire in the Mikdash. This fire is necessary not only to burn the day's karbono, but additionally, it would serve as a miraculous sign of God's presence in the Mikdash. Rashi tells us in Parshat Vayikra, even though the fire of the Mikdash was miraculously sustained from the heavens. Nevertheless, mitzvah There is a mitzvah for individuals to feed the fire. And that is what the Kohanim did on a daily basis. The blatant difficulty of Zot Torah Ta'ola, not telling us the laws of the burnt offering, is understood by some among the Bechor Shur as to teach us that Zot Torah Ta'ola, these are the laws of Ha'ola, is actually a reference to the carbon ola. The most essential carbon ola is the one described in Parsha Titzave, which tells us that daily we bring two carbon olas an ola, ola tamid in the morning, and ola tamid in the afternoon. This ola tamid, this daily carbon tamid, says the Bechor Shor, is what is being referenced here. But yet that's a little difficult because, after all, the ashes of the carbon ola are not only from the daily carbon tamid but from whatever karbonot happened to have been brought on the previous day. What is the Torah, in fact, trying to teach us? Very possibly, the Torah is guiding the Kohanim not how to bring the karbon ola, but how to be involved in the ola tamid, how to be involved consistently and constantly on a daily basis in what the daily ola tamid is all about. Rav Yehuda Amital Zatzal, who would often quote the Maharal citation, of the discussion in the Midrash, seeking to identify the Klal Gadol Torah, the great principle of the Torah. Rabbi Akiva's opinion is well known. Rabbi Akiva tells us the Klal Gadol Torah is via half the Reya very understandable to love one's neighbor as oneself. But yet the Maharal cites an additional Tana who says, no, the great principle of the Torah is not nothing less than etakeves echad ta'aseba bokir, etakeves hashini ta'asebein arbayim the daily requirement of bringing the carbon tamid twice a day. This seemingly unassuming pasuk, which describes a daily requirement that doesn't come with any fanfare, is nothing less than this great principle of the Torah. For Rav Amital, this underscored the essential religious value of mechuyavut, of daily requirement and commitment. Although the Torah celebrates individualism, it must arise out of a sense of obligation and commitment. The daily grind is the most significant avoda, even if less glamorous than moments of inspiration. In this short presentation of the Kohanim, Zot Torah Ta'ola, the Torah might be actually informing us how to ensure success in this daily avoda tatamid. Because it is much easier to perform the daily avoda and offer the offerings than to do so with H tamid, with constant fire and passion. As Rabbi Tam described, there are days of Yemei Hasina as opposed to Yemei Ha'ava. There are days where we just don't feel like it, as opposed to the days where we're driven by a sense of majesty and inspiration. Avoda, though, is a daily requirement. And to succeed, the Kohanim are told, understand the nature of Trumat Hadeshen. Trumat Hadeshen in its simplest form is what the Sefer HaChinuch describes as a way of removing the previous day's ashes both because it is not mechubad, it is not honorable for the mikdash to have the ashes of the previous day, as well as they weigh down the fire and make it more difficult to stay alit. But this mitzvah is seemingly far more than just a janitorial service, ensuring that we clean the ashes of the previous day. 
It is done with big day kahuna, with priestly garments. And according to most authorities, even the subsequent removal of the ashes from the Mikdash are done with priestly garments, albeit of a lower stature. The Truman Adeshin is not just removing the past, but is giving us the perspective of the today based upon the past. Rav Hirsch explains that we begin the daily avoda every day with the knowledge and understanding that we are just building off our previous day's accomplishments. We are building off the past. We lift it up. We're meirim et adeshen, And only then do we remove it from the premises. Every day we recognize the need for a fresh beginning. But even more so, explains Rav Hirsch, we might be so rooted in the past that we are unable to approach the challenges and opportunities of today. In his own words, the thought of what has already been accomplished can be the death of that which is still to be accomplished. Woe unto him who with self-smug complacency thinks he can rest on his laurels on what he has already achieved and who does not meet the task of every fresh day with full fresh devotion as if it were the first day of his service. Every trace of yesterday's sacrifice must be removed from the Mizbeach so that the service of the new day can be started on completely fresh ground. The Trumat HaDeshen ensures that we continue from the past, but we feed the fire daily. We recognize the new opportunities of the day. The Sfat Emet, along with many other of the Hasidic thinkers, focuses on the power of the Eish HaMizbeach, that fiery passion, which we seek to have us driving us daily. How are we supposed to do so? First, he explains that removing the ashes and the residue of the past actually opens up a day of holiness and accomplishment. The Karban Ola is a Karban of thought, deeply rooted in an individual's thought. One must clear their mind in order to succeed. But he says that is not sufficient. One must constantly feed the fire. One must approach the fire every day as a new opportunity. We are not just burning from the past. We are providing new opportunities and new ways and new techniques in order to feed the fire of our mind. He explains that every morning we seek these new methods and ideas in order to be able to be mivarer, to clarify, to understand what's in front of us, to identify the techniques and strategies. By using this daily avoda, the Torah tells us, you want Torah ta'ola, you want to be involved in daily service, you want to be a Kohen, so learn how to lift up the past but then put it aside in order to focus on the present and learn how to constantly feed the fire and don't become rooted in one's previous successes. Although this parsha addresses the Kohanim, it is in fact also addressing the Mamlechet Kohanim, the Goy Kadosh, the entire Jewish nation, the kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We are all bidden to do a daily avoda. At times we might feel Yemea Sina, we might feel difficulties. But if we learn how to harness these lessons in this week's parsha, in Mirza Hashem, our life of commitment and responsibility will also be a life of fire and passion. Have a wonderful day.